Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today to discuss what I like to think of making good on the promise of agri-food in Australia. Experience has taught me that speed is the currency of a growth company and that alignment is the key driver of transformation. It is my truth, therefore, that speed and alignment are the currency of growth sectors and ultimately of growth economies. Sadly, as a nation, despite having a burning platform, we have not yet addressed the issue of international competitiveness with speed nor alignment. Other nations appear to have done so. In terms of the agri-food sector, we have potential. However, we must act with an aligned vision, focused effort and appropriate investment. Whilst we will never feed the entire emerging middle class in Asia, we can capitalise on the, a the Asian affluence and the growth of that affluence by playing at the very profitable top end if we're smart, nimble and determined. Let me step back for a moment. In early 2012, as then CEO of Kraft Foods, I gave a speech on a similar topic at the Australian and Isra Israeli Chamber of Commerce lunch. I had led my company through a period of transformation to make it the fastest growing food manufacturer in Australia, with 90% of products produced locally. I had expanded my brief to cover Korea and Japan in addition to ANZ, and had been on the food processing industry strategy group, group and the Prime Minister's Manufacturers Leaders Group. Along with many MNEs and SMEs, we had framed a view on how we could create a vibrant food manufacturing sector, both for the Australian consumer and for the burgeoning Asian middle class. Having reflected on this work and the work that has been done by others, including the Business Council of Australia, my view is, firstly, we have a significant opportunity that continues to exist for Australian agri-food business. Between now and 2050, it is estimated that the world's population is set to increase from 7.2 billion to 9.6 billion. Estimates indicate that in 50 years' time, half of the world's middle class will in fact be in Asia, and there will be more billionaires in the Asia-Pacific region than in any other. Many of the countries with the largest demand will not be able to produce the quality, or critically, the quantity of food demanded by their consumers, particularly those in the upper and upper middle class. Australia can meet part of this demand, but to do so, we will need to significantly increase our output. We need to do this through a combination of investment in improved productivity and critically consumer-led innovation. And as a small player, we need to focus on the higher end of the market Again, and I cannot stress this enough, to do this we need to understand and meet the needs of our consumers better than our competitors, be those businesses or nations. As a sector, Australian agri-food has a significant natural advantage and a solid, yet eroding, competitive starting point. So if we are to improve our position, we need to focus on eight key areas. Firstly, we must fix our infrastructure shortfalls, motivating investment that are in the national best interest. Infrastructure deficiencies mean that up to 30 cents in the dollar on grain production go on transport costs, creating overcapacities in areas such as our port system, where we have such significant issues with roads and rail that continue to hinder our competitiveness is frankly a travesty. We must support industry that is acting in the interests of the nation, as well as their own individual businesses. Secondly, we need to cluster to deliver supply chain efficiencies into key regions, or we must partner smartly with more scaled players, acting as a smart SME nation, fueling innovation and the high-end needs of more scaled, capital-rich businesses. We must address impediments to growth such as unnecessary and du duplicative regulation. Quality and safety standards have served us well. Costly duplicative regulation has not. We must foster in a structured manner better collaboration between industry, policy makers, higher education and CSIRO. The focus must be on delivering tangible outcomes, commercial outcomes, 
and shifts against predetermined KPIs across all three time horizons. We must align our national assets behind compelling sector visions. We must also continue to enable free and fair trade. Free trade is without a doubt the global growth engine. However, it must be free and fair where Australian manufacturers are competing on a level playing field both domestically and internationally. Recent signing of free, free trade agreements is encouraging, but a focus on non-tariff barriers is critically needed as it is holding back access to new export markets as we speak. Ensuring that the benefits of free trade agreements are realised and understood, particularly by SMEs, will also be key. Number seven, we must motivate investment in productivity. Capital investment in infrastructure to motivate farm, great, farm gate productivity, coupled with investment in plant and equipment, and finally, human and business capability will be key. Whilst our labour market may not be low cost, there is no doubt it must be nimble and it must be high performing. The corporate tax rate could be a means to encouraging investment in productivity. And finally, and importantly, we need to re-energise food and agricultural innovation in Australia. We need to give the industry from the farm gate to the plate the capability to innovate, design and be connected to meaningful, in a meaningful way to global new technologies, processes, expertise and also the high-end markets in a way that simplifies, reduces cost and de-risks investment. This innovation system needs a greater focus on the front-end steps of innovation to ensure solutions, solutions are grounded in consumer insight and needs and robust design principles. We need to better prioritise our investment in research and development. I am increasingly of the view that the innovation system needs to be captured in a tangible hub or vehicle, manned by experienced industry people and professional across key pillars of Asian consumer and market insights, innovation and branding, supply chain, business development and market access. The expert skills from my experience that you need to perform at a world-class level are expensive and rare. They are therefore better pulled together and shared across industry for maximum impact. Clearly, collaboration with the key national assets will also be important. Now moving from showing or from telling to showing. In February 2013, we at Mondelez created the Food Innovation Centre in collaboration with Victorian State Government and the University of Melbourne under the leadership of Nicholas Georges, Angelina Chara and Simon Talbot. The Food Innovation Centre is an open centre which connects SMEs across Victoria to deliver innovations and build capability. It brings to bear state-of-the-art new technologies to expedite the front end of innovation development through rapid prototyping technologies such as 3D printing, 3D scanning, virtual store environments and knowledge mapping via tabletop technology. In support of this initiative and in partnership with the University of Melbourne, we also launched a Master of Food and Packaging Innovation aimed at developing our next generation of food entrepreneurs. I'm going to pause shortly to show you a quick video, but can you imagine creating a product for Asian export using Asian insights, <coughs> testing the taste of the product and the packaging of a, vari the, a variety of packaging formats in real time? showing the brand on a variety of supermarket shelves, be it in Tokyo, Shanghai or Jakarta, getting live consumer feedback from across the world real time, all without leaving the innovation centre and at one tenth of the cost of traditional methods. I'd like to now show you a video. The world is ever changing with broadened competition across local and global markets, and a growing middle class in Asia. Innovation is now more important than ever, and the opportunities for premium products are increasing. Are you ready to embrace these opportunities? By developing breakthrough innovation to expand your business, 
and capture the unmet demand by opening up new export channels into Asia? Then we can help. Introducing the Food Innovation Centre in Victoria, Australia. An industry-first collaboration between the State of Victoria and Mondelez International. Imagine a place that is dedicated to putting together the capabilities and the facilities that are required to achieve best-in-class innovation, but too expensive for any of us in the industry to afford, either to acquire or to maintain at world-class level. Imagine a place where the industry can access at cost the latest virtualization, 3D design, rapid prototyping technologies to bring their ideas to life and test them with consumers before the real costs of commercialization kick in. Increasing their success tenfold and reducing the cost of mistakes by simply satisfying consumer needs better. Imagine a place where the current and the new generation can learn, apply and pass on best practices together use the National Research Insights Program to lift the collective game of our industry up to the stakes raised by the Asian growth. What this investment means is that we are going to be able to not only enhance the innovation agenda within our own business, but rather also help Australian SMEs and most notably Victorian SMEs build a capability in innovation, looking not only to the 3 million Australian consumers we have, but in fact the 1.6 billion Asian consumers on our doorstep. We're incredibly excited because this is not just about craft. It's also about the SMEs and our supply chain that we can partner with. It's actually a collaboration with higher education to actually build smarter, brighter, more future-proofed graduates. And it's actually about creating manufacturing as a thriving, prosperous, competitive sector going forward for Australian consumers and, and population alike. So in closing, the opportunity is real. There is a pathway to success, but swift, aligned, bipartisan vision setting and action that is supported by industry will be critical. Thank you very much.